Hi, I'm Oz Square, former professional fighter, owner here at Inspire Fitness here in Tupelo, Mississippi, personal trainer, fitness enthusiast. So my journey in fitness as a adult started out, uh, I was in the workforce like everyone else, just going to the gym lifting weights every day. I was 23 years old. Uh, they offered boxing at the gym I was practicing strength training at and just a coach or the guy that called himself a coach <laughs> uh, saw me in there every day, he noticed my bill, he noticed my worth ethic and asked me if I would be interested in taking up boxing. I was, I was interested, but at the same time, I didn't. there wasn't a program at the time. But when he said the word free, it kind of sparked my interest to where it's like, I'm always willing to learn something. So it went from there. And my dad was a trucker. I had a dad growing up, but like I didn't already have like, I guess you would say the guidance of a father figure. Just being a black youth, it wasn't like, it's not a whole, there's not a whole lot of, I guess you would say like influence, like the you see on TV, but it's either super lame or drug or gang related. So I guess you would say to expire to be something more, I wasn't, I wasn't into traditional sports. I wasn't tall, I didn't play basketball. <laughs> My football coaches were hard. Growing up in the South, there's a lot of, I guess you would say, the influential characters, like my fights. I had I had good coaches. Like, I had a lot of good coaches coming up, but a lot of them were, no, 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 let me take that back. They were horrible coaches, but they were good people. <laughs> so being experienced, uh, me and one of my students had that talk the other day, is like, his soccer coaches coming up with just guys that work during the day and soccer play soccer on the weekend. So, when I got into martial arts, when I found martial arts after being in fitness and kind of being exposed to poor coaching, I guess you would say, it led me to want to know what I was teaching him because I felt like I was Mike Tyson without a coach because nobody wanted to do it as much as I did. It's one of the reasons I'm in the position I'm in. It was all I wanted to do when I found it. And it was just like train, train, train. I maintained the top 10 ranking in my amateur and pro career technically training by myself, by digging into knowledge, going and cross training. And it was a harsh awakening for me, I guess I would say, like being exposed to higher and higher and higher levels of training. I realized that the guys that I love or the people that I looked up to really weren't as passionate as they claim to be and really weren't as knowledgeable as they claim to be. And it just kind of stemmed from there, which like now what's helped me the most Coming up, I guess you would say, in fitness, like getting to the point to where I own my own gym, being the first personal trainer that I know of in the area, especially black, to own his own gym was like staying within my domain of competency. Like I never tried to sell some people something I didn't know. So it's just like I see a lot of trainers now, they're they're certified, but they're not qualified to instruct and just how people weren't, I guess you would say, living witnesses of the shit they were selling. So it kind of led me to like dig deeper because I was I'm going I don't like using the word victim, but like that was a couple of the roadblocks and stumbling blocks that I hit in my journey because I had the passion to want to get better, but the people that were trying to sell me stuff were just selling me stuff. It wasn't they didn't really they weren't really trying to move me forward. I was just like considered a pawn in their game, I guess you would say. I don't have to motivate you to brush your teeth. I don't have to motivate you to take a bath, like you'll do whatever you find meaningful to you. So it's just like, I, it was once I found fitness, it was all I wanted to do. Whether I made money off of it or not, hasn't been an easy journey at all. Like I've trained people at the park for $5. So, I mean, it was just like, it, it, I put more in. I guess that's why most people aren't really making it because they're either trying to live up to a standard that somebody else has set for them or a standard that they have egotistically created in a world that's superficial. You see what I'm saying? Like, you're not gonna put energy in something that you're not true to. It's like, we all know that. Like, you, back to what I said earlier, like, my coaches didn't put anything in the coaching because this wasn't what they wanted to do. Like, exercise was what I wanted to do. Fighting was what I wanted to do. And it wasn't until I got Xed out of fighting that my rekindled my passion for fitness, I guess I would say. And then I, I realized the only reason I like fighting was because I like competing with myself against other people. I wanted to win. 
yeah, I guess just being a kid, not growing up with much, I wanted to win. So defeating myself was all I had to do. And I'm in better shape now that I retired from fighting and I'm just back to exercising for myself again, rather than doing it for, I guess you would say a show or to try to beat someone else. The more helpful I was, the more help I would get. And it's just like, I, as I grew, because I guess I would say I came up pretty fast. As I grew, I guess stripping away the ego to where I never knew, I never could know enough. A lot of people can't learn because they, they already know everything. So I realized that I didn't know anything and that people were depending on me to know what I needed to know. So I, that kind of led me for, that also was my passion for training myself and other people. So once I realized how big an influence I was health-wise in people's lives and how inspiring I was simply by doing stuff that I like to do. It was, I guess you would say, party tricks. It's just like I like exercising, so it's like a kid, like look at what I can do. <laughs> so I guess, the, you know, like always training with a passion in mind state of just like wanting to get better led me. And that also inspired other people because like, well, you can do stuff that only 1% of people they could do. It's just like, what led you on your journey? It's like actually being competent and humble enough to help them because it's hard for a lot of people. And especially like since I've been in it for years, just kind of, and not to make fun of anyone, but just like, are there a lot of dyslexic people or like people that don't have real good cognitive motor skills and like seeing that now, especially in a uh, media driven world where we don't move very much and how man is digressing because we don't move at all. So like we sit down all day, we're always hunched over all day and people's posture is technically killing them. And I guess you would say, seeing it like it really doesn't take that big a change if you really want to change and how the accumulation of wanting to get better over time will help you get better. You got to find how you can find yourself, I guess you would say, and that would be the beginning journey for me. Uh, Fitness is where I found myself. And then after finding myself through fitness, I found myself in fitness. So I guess you would say like, uh, I heard a saying one time, if you had all the time and the money in the world, what would you do? And uh, Jordan Peterson says a lot, kind of, you're, it's a car, you or somebody anyway, it was a psychologist that said, you, you'll you find your, the journey of growth is found through the things you're most interested in. So if you want to find yourself, find out what you're already interested in and maybe try to attach something else meaningful to that. Like I had a brother that passed away from health issues. It's like the black culture in general, they don't take very good care of themselves physically. And growing up in that and me not wanting to just be a victim of genetics or like play the system like I couldn't do anything about it. So like climbing up the socioeconomic ladder, like, you know, just things of that nature, just actually like not accepting what comes to me because once you start at zero, I guess you would say, it's like I didn't graduate high school. I didn't have any formal business education. I didn't have a rich mom or dad to just cut me a check for a business. So I guess you would say not, not already having the tools laying around, having to uh, having to increase my value in a system that didn't really value me, and that's kind of what helped me. I just always stay humble. As long as you're doing it for the right pe reasons, which is f to help other people. Like I, I found my journey through, of course, trying to move myself up, but at the same time. Fixing myself helped me learn to fix other people. I'm not an ego, but I'm not trying to build a bunch of businesses to make a bunch of money. I just want to help a bunch of people that haven't been exposed to the right type of help. So I guess I would say from all my struggles and trials and tribulations, you can grow out of all that and become who you want slash need to be. I guess the more important word would be need to be. A lot of times we want to be stuff, and like I need it to be. I guess uh, how influential or inspiring I was to all my friends to somewhat man better manage their health, and I just wanted to lead by example. You know, I just 
I don't believe in selling stuff that I wasn't doing. <laughs> so I practice what I preach.